I love tango. I love the drama in tango. But initially, I'm a, I'm a jazz player. I'm a bebop player. I as well love Middle Eastern music. You know, you have your Greek salad, which is quite interesting and I have managed to create my Gilad salad. It's something that I define lately as urban folk. I think that music and especially jazz and improvised, improvised music should reflect on our social landscape. <laughs> I think that my music reflects on this multiplicity of sounds, smells, and maybe brings jazz back into a, a reflective, socially orientated art form, rather than very academic, where you play very clever ideas. My music is not clever. My music is very, very simple. <laughs> When you listen to my albums, I think that you can sing each of the tunes. Nothing is too sophisticated. And I'm not interested in very sophisticated music. When it comes to jazz, Coltrane, Charlie Parker, Cannonball, it's pretty simple. It's beautiful. It's very challenging. But it is simple. You can sing bird solo. It's a, it's a tune. And I try to make music that at least I understand it. It sounds very funny, but sometimes I find myself playing in bands, and even the band leader cannot sing the music that he himself had written. It won't happen to me. <laughs> living in a in an horrific time what we see in Gaza these days is um, is a genocide is an Holocaust for me for many years I'm writing I'm talking about the danger of the Jewish national state. Identity that is based on chosenness, on supremacy, on their belief that you are the chosen people denies the obvious realization that we are all one kind. It demolishes the very important understanding or realization of human brotherhood. How can a soldier sit in a tank and drive into a house with kids. How can human beings see children, women, elders dying? It's devastating to see, but I'm very happy to see that everyone around the world is devastated by it. And this is something that will be very, very difficult to Israel 
to recover and I think that they will never recover from it. in Israel, I, I, I was convinced by the Zionist dream. I thought the Jews were persecuted and they deserve. At a certain stage, I think that it has something to do with music. The fact that I started to play music, and the music that I really loved was jazz. And I, out of a sudden, I kind of was like, Wow, Charlie Parker, it's beautiful. And I went to the shop and he was black. And, and Dizzy Gillespie was black. And Sonny Rollins was black. Still is. And Ron Carter. And Miles. And Coltrane. And I thought to myself, they're all black. So it's impossible that the Jews are the best in anything. So something is wrong with this chosenness. <laughs> I joined the Israeli army, Lebanon war, 20,000 Lebanese civilians wiped out by the Israeli army, especially the Israeli Air Force. Uh, it's just impossible. And this was kind of the stage where I started to understand that something is wrong with this whole concept of ethnic cleansing. And I cracked as a Zionist. And it, I'm now 45, so this happened 25 years ago. It didn't happen in one day. But by the time I was 27, 28, I realized that living in Israel, I was living as a colonial on stolen land. And I decided to leave. At the time, I was already married. And it was very clear to me that I would never bring kids. To bring kids on stolen land is irresponsible for them. I moved out, you know, I immigrated to Britain and my wife followed me and we have family now and we have kids and everything is great to a certain extent and by the way you know Israelis can easily move out of Palestine but Palestinians cannot move anywhere they are living in a prison and this is why it is my responsibility to deal with this issue <laughs> When we really go on stage, we shut our eyes and we are concerned with one thing, delivering beauty to entertain ourselves for most, but it is something that share with all the people that are going to come. Mm -hmm. 